Welcome. This is all minus one quick shots. So, folks, we are two and a half days into the Biden administration, and I want to talk to you about some things that are going on already, of course, and things to come, things to expect. Now, we are going back to business as usual. That is not the business of Trump, but the business of the last 18 years of administrations, perhaps even longer than that if we go back into the Clinton administration. However, uh, we have a new wokeness upon us. The woke is all. The woke is God. The woke is everything. And because of that, the things that Donald Trump did against the wokeness have been stripped away via executive order. So they will be bringing back uh, intersectional race theory into the federal government. Not that it ever truly went away. They will be uh, getting rid of funding for any organization that does not allow for transgender people to be included with uh, the, the gender in which they decide that they are. And these are all arbitrary designations. You can just go in and say, I am a female and go compete in a female uh, weightlifting or track and field event if you would like. There is no testing. There is no sort of means by which they vet this. If you say so, you are it. I think it was Zuby, the rapper, who did this some years back where he just went into a powerlifting meet with women and won, broke world records. Why? Because men are stronger than women, folks. There is a biological component to all of this. There is a dozen and one things, testosterone, bone structure, bone density, the way that the hips are between men and women. I can tell you from a skeleton, if you are a man or a woman, based on the shape of your pelvis, uh, women have knees that come in more, so they have direct line of force into the ground versus men. Uh, there's 101 different things we could talk about with that. But no, wokeness is everything, and wokeness is here to stay. This, of course, is part of the globalist agenda to uh, make what is down up and what is up down. Everything's about reversal because it's all about power. Might makes right, and it is meant to demoralize you. So that's just one little thing. Another thing is, of course, the troops are still in Washington, D.C., the 20,000 plus troops that are there. We have more troops in Washington, D.C. than we do in Afghanistan or Iraq right now. It's quite insane. And these folks are being held up in parking garages. <laughs> well, most parking garages in D.C. are underground and indoor, so it's probably not that bad of a deal. In fact, uh, troops are often in similar conditions, but you would think that they would have some sort of better accommodations for them. Of course, the former president, Donald Trump, did say that they could come to his hotel and stay there free of charge. And I've seen some video of uh, police forces there specifically. But aside from that, what is uh, Beijing Biden doing? Well, he is getting rid of any vestige of the Trump administration. He's removing things from the Internet, from the White House uh, and federal government websites that Donald Trump had put into place. This, my friends, is to get rid of all vestige of who Donald Trump was and patriotism and liberty. Now, was Donald Trump perfect? Of course not. He was far from perfect. He was far from the best candidate of liberty, but he was something different that the globalists seem to be against. Now, the only way that that is not true is if he was some sort of shill meant to give people hope to demoralize us further, and it was all part of their plan in the long run. I don't think so, based on lots of things that came out over time and lots of things that the president did. Regardless, look forward to our trade agreements being eroded that uh, helped Americans and back to the global standard. Um, look forward to uh, more foreign wars. Look forward to us going into Syria within the next few years or amping up troops there in some manner or another. Look forward to the persecutions of people on the right wing. They've been talking about so much. This is so bad that people are calling for within the federal government the FBI investigation of Parler because supposedly somehow Parler, even though there was no organization there, calls this riot the Capitol Insurrection the Capitol insurrection was so horrible, we have to excise all these personalities. And uh, the reality is, is no, that didn't happen. They were organized on Facebook and Twitter. 
You're not going to see anything about Facebook or Twitter organizing them, though, because this isn't about the right versus the left. This is about the corporations gaining power and eliminating their competition and finding excuses to do so. So this is pretty typical behavior, corporate behavior. It's called rent seeking, getting special privileges from the government to kick your competitors out. And now they have the ultimate excuse. That is the terrible right wingers, those liberty minded people that want to leave you alone. They don't go along with our great reset. And by the way, that's something else we are going to be seeing is this uh, economic change. We're going to see this great economic change in the United States because the Federal Reserve has been inflating our currency tremendously. 66% of all money printed since we got off the Bretton Woods standards was printed last year. They say this is because of the COOF. This is not because of the COOF. They did this because they want to inflate the currency and destroy the dollar. They want to bring in some sort of Chinese-style social uh, credit score system. They like it. They like the authoritarianism. They like the control. That is why they are willing to censor you. That's why they don't want you to speak. And that is why they won't even listen to you. And honestly, folks, unless you can find an honest leftist who will listen to ideas, you shouldn't engage with them. Why? Why should you not engage with them? Because they are ideologically possessed and there's nothing you can do for them. Solzhenitsyn writes about this. You should read his book, even though it is massive. It's like this big. You can get abridged copies, though, and get the gist of it, or at least go read some of his lectures that he gave here in the United States. This is nothing new under the sun, but it is new in America. And for those of you who think, well, this can't happen here, it's happening here, and it will continue to happen here until people get so disenfranchised and so fed up that there will be violence and bloodshed in the streets. Speaking of which, there were massive riots, Antifa riots. Imagine that. Antifa rioting? Never. Yes, because they were always going to do so and look forward to potentially Biden and his administration and people who are on the left, the Democrats saying, well, Antifa is a problem. They've been a problem. They've been a problem for the last six, seven, eight years in the United States. And we just saw magically all of a sudden Twitter get rid of a bunch of people who had Antifa accounts. Amazing. All of a sudden, after all these years. We also saw the WHO come out with a statement saying that PCR tests are not the best way to test and you should not spend them up as much as uh, many people were and put out guidelines for that. Again, right after the election, of course. Uh, I may remind some of you, there was an article the other week about what the COOF would look like after the vaccines came out and it was mass distributed. And it was something like this. It's just going to be like a common cold. It's just going to be a little nuisance. That's really all it is now, folks. There is, of course, a, a chance of getting uh, pneumonia. There's always a chance of getting pneumonia when you get some sort of head cold, no matter how it is caused. Uh, this happened to my daughter a few years back. It was pretty bad, but she did not have to be hospitalized, and she did make it through. Um, but look, folks, that's really what we're counting here. The excess deaths are pretty much on par with what they have been for every year. You can go through that data yourself. I have covered it numerous times on here. Uh, it is what it is. And we live in an empire of lies. So with that, what else should we expect? Well, like I said, the economy will be going through a downturn here very soon um, with the inflation and policies. We're, we're, we'll have a return to the Obama years. Uh, you know, people talked about growth and whatever else under the Obama years, but it just didn't really happen uh, because, well, the people in the media are propagandists. They're there to spin a narrative. Now, I will freely admit to you, I spin a narrative, but my narrative is based in truth. Their narrative is based in the power structure and they hold the power structure. They hold all of the institutions. So we will see that coming uh we will see more and more scaled up persecution of people on the right everyone will be called nazis and there's going to be nothing new and i'm not saying this to get you all fearful or be scared but to have you be prepared because when you are proactive you are in a state of control when you are reactive you are in a psychological downward spiral and that downward spiral is constantly being on your back and constantly having to survive if you know ahead of time you can have a plan of action this is how it works in the military this is how it works in martial arts they teach you to be offensive and i don't mean offensive as in violence i just mean being proactive 
Speaking of violence and what I just said about Antifa and whatever else, again, this will ramp up on the right over time, especially when people start losing jobs, if people start going hungry, whatever else is going on. And as they get disenfranchised based on their race or their sexual proclivity or their religion. Right now, we are creating unequal rules for uh, racial justice. And this, my friends, is just code for communism. Because this is how the communists work. They always work this way. The proletariat versus the bourgeoisie argument did not quite work out very well in the past. And so they switched things around and racial justice is the new uh, proletariat versus bourgeoisie. And in most cases, the left are the ones who have caused most of the racial injustices. This is about responsibility versus um, being libertine meaning having no responsibility and being hedonistic. So again, what should we expect from uh, old Beijing Biden? Well, we should expect a slight ramp up to appease the left of leftist ideals. We should see a more command control economy. We should see more regulations. We will see, like I said, the ramping up of the leftist things like more wokeness, more persecution of people on the right who believe in traditional uh, lifestyles. And we will see a change in our economy. Now, how do I know that one specifically? Because Joe Biden's campaign slogan was Build Back Better. And Build Back Better comes right out of Klaus Schwab's World Economic Forum and Great Reset. And there have been numerous Western nation leaders who have said the same, including Pope Francis. Uh, it, It is unbelievable that people have their head in the sand about this. And uh, just in case you aren't aware, I started a new segment called Story Time, where I read directly from important documents, and I will be reading about uh, Klaus Schwab's Great Reset. I did one yesterday. Uh, it was just at the introduction. I'm going to finish the introduction today and perhaps get into chapter one, trying to keep them to a certain amount of time. So I'll do them as a, a uh, several series part, and we'll have them in a playlist. Now, I will also cover other books. And I may switch to other books in between for a little bit and go back and forth. But again, if you want to know, I'm not trying to sell you nonsense. I'm trying to sell you and show you what these folks believe and what they're saying. And part of this great reset is the fourth industrial revolution, which I also have a copy of, and I will be covering that as well in the future. But in any case, that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to cover a few points, what to expect, uh, what Biden has been doing already, how he has basically tried to destroy anything and everything that Trump has built up over the last few years. Of course, Trump did this with Obama. So that's not to be unexpected. But uh, essentially, just expect more corporatism, expect more uh, authoritarianism, expect more political posturing on the left and uh, be prepared. Be Just be prepared for the economic downturn and the changing of the economy and, and potentially largely uh, the idea that we will no longer be the world currency, which I, I foresee is coming very soon with the hyperinflation that is in place. So that's about it. That's about all I got, guys. With all that, this has been all Minus One Quick Shots. And I wish you all well.